Today we're back with another practice in using money. In this lesson, which is Unit 4, Lesson 2, we're going to add but using dollars. Now let's think about what we know about dollars. When I write one dollar, I write it like this. Or I also know that one dollar is 100 cents. So I can write it either way. Let's go ahead and practice with our dollars. Here's some information that we already know about the dollar. Just like we said, a dollar is worth 100 cents. We also can write it as one dollar with the dollar sign and the decimal. Now, just like with our quarters, our dollar also shows George Washington. He is on the quarter and the one dollar bill. The dollar is also not a coin. The coins are quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. They're made of metal. Dollars are made of paper. We often call them paper currency. So they are made of different materials as well. You will see how much the paper currency is worth by looking up in the four corners. As you can see, all four corners on the dollar have a number one. You might see a $5 bill. If it's worth $5, you will see fives in the corners. But today we're just going to be working with $1 bills. Let's get started. Here's our first practice in adding dollars and coins. Now, as you can see with the coins that we're going to add, there are no dollar bills that we're adding in this problem, and that's okay. Sometimes we will have dollars and sometimes we won't. So let's start by adding some coins for practice. Now, I always look at the top to see what coin I'm adding, but on the bottom, I am going to keep adding my numbers. I see that first I have a quarter. Quarter is worth 25 cents. Next, I need to add 10 more cents onto that. So I look in the tens place. Right now I have two tens and I need to add one more 10. So that means now I have 35 cents. And let's add on another 10. That gives me 45 cents, and then I need five more. So 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. So all of these coins added together gives me 50 cents. Now, second graders, is 50 cents enough to give me a dollar? No, it is not. A dollar is one hundred cents and 50 is not 100. So right here where there's our dollar line, I'm going to put a zero because 50 cents gives me zero dollars. I don't have enough. But on these last two lines, I can write the number 50. So even though there's a dollar sign here, this amount still stands for 50 cents because it comes after the decimal. I have zero dollars and 50 cents. Let's try another problem. Now, as you can see, I have a dollar here. So the dollar is worth 100 cents. Let's put 100 cents at the bottom. Now I need to add on 25 more cents. Now, some people might like to do it like this. We know how to add up and down, so we can add up and down if that's helpful for you. Zero plus five is five, zero plus two is two, and one plus nothing is one. So if I add on 25 cents, I now have 125 cents, and now I just need to add on one more. What's the next number after 25? 
26. So I have 126 cents. Now I want to write it as dollars and cents. If I have 126 cents, do I have a dollar? Yes, I do because I have 100 cents. So I have one dollar and 26 cents. This decimal here separates the dollars from the cents. So I always remember to put that decimal when I'm using the dollar sign. Here is another problem. As you can see in this problem, we are going to need to draw the dollars and the coins. It says, Aiden has one dollar, two quarters, one dime, five nickels, and three pennies. So we're looking for his total amount of money. Let's draw all of those things. Let's start with $1. Now it has us draw a box with 100 in it. You can either write 100 or sometimes I like to go like this. And I actually write $1. That's okay too. Now I need two quarters. To draw those two quarters, I'm going to do two circles with 25, because quarters are worth 25, one dime, five nickels. And three pennies. Now we want to make sure that we draw all of these coins Sometimes we only draw some of them and we forget some, and then when we add them, we're not going to get the correct answer because we've skipped some of the coins. Alrighty, second grade. So let's go ahead and start adding up these coins. Now, I know I have my dollar, so I'm going to leave the dollar, and I'm just going to add up the coins first. Now, when we add up the coins, it's very important that we start with the larger coins first. That's why I always draw mine from largest to the smallest coin. This helps me when I add. If I do them all randomly, then it's going to be harder for me to add them. Now, let's see. Oh, I remember that little song I sang in the last lesson here about quarters. 25, 50, 75, a dollar. So when I count my quarters, I can sing that silly song. 25, 50. Now I'm going to stop because I don't have any more quarters. So right now I have 50 cents. Then I add on a 10. So I go from 50 to 60. Now I need to count by five. So I have 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. 85, now I'm switching to pennies, so I count one more. So 85, 86, 87, 88. So I have $1.88. So I write it just like this, $1.88. Remember, counting money takes a lot of practice. Make sure that you're practicing at home. Make sure that you are counting in your head and make sure that when we have a problem like this one, that we are drawing out the different coins to help us add.